The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord Christ. In the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, our time together is almost finished. Today we reach Jericho. Jericho, which marks the end of the line in terms of the path from the north of Israel to the capital city. We have been traveling a long time together, some of us for years. We have been keeping Christ company, and we have been, we have been through hardships with him, and we have discovered the great blessing of being with him. We're not quite sure yet who he is. We're not quite sure yet why we followed him all this long way. It seems like some days it's almost possible to, to figure it out. And other days you just operate on momentum. Well, I'm here. I'll march along and see what happens. This last, this last part of our journey has taken us all the way down the length of the Jordan Valley. And, and it started actually north of the Sea of Galilee when we had that discussion at uh, Caesarea Philippi about Christ being the Messiah. And then for the first time, he told us that we were going to Jerusalem and that he would be put to death and rise again. So we've known right from that moment that, that the end was coming, even if we didn't understand what that end would mean and still don't. And during that time, he has, he has tried to equip us to carry on his work, to embody him after the resurrection, whatever, whatever the resurrection means. It has been a puzzling journey for us right from the beginning. We haven't really understood much at all. Do you remember? After he told us that we we're going to Jerusalem, we immediately began to argue about who was the greatest. You remember that, that James and John wanted to be offered the deal to sit on his right and on his left. Over and over again, we disciples have not quite got it right. But we stuck with it. We've carried on. It's interesting, you know, today the story of our being with him 
outside of Jericho involves a blind man. Just before we began this long march down the valley, just before Caesarea Philippi, there was another blind man. You may remember, it was the day before we had the big conversation about being a Messiah. And, and Jesus encountered this blind man and he took him aside and he made spittle with his with uh, dirt and with spit and he put it on his eyes and he said, what do you see? And the guy said, well, I see a little bit, but it looks like tree, people look like trees walking. And so Jesus did it again and the man's full sight was restored. That's just before we began this long part of the journey. And today we conclude this long part of the journey with another blind man. You might almost think that those blind men bracket our own blindness, that they can see, and we have such trouble seeing. Jericho, of course, is, is the, the city uh, that marks the end of this path down the valley, just before the road turns and goes up into the Judean hills. And in 12 miles up that path, we will come to Jerusalem. So we know that our time together is short. We know that Christ is going to do something magnificent in the coming days. And that we are to, to stay with him, not because we know what's going to happen or understand what's going to happen, but because, well, because here we are. And we've come this far with him. And besides, as, as Peter said to him one day, where else would we go if we don't go with you? The blind man was, a, was one of actually many beggars outside the gates of Jericho. It was a popular place for beggars. It was kind of a little community of them. All kinds of beggars, blind and deaf and lame, because that was their, their livelihood, was to be by the side of the road and pray and hope that the pilgrims who were going to the temple in Jerusalem would be moved by pity and would give them some kind of coin. And so when we left Jericho, it was not surprising. There was a lot of us by then, that had joined our, our band. And we were just walking along on our way. And you could hear the beggars outside the, the walls, mostly a quiet moaning sound of people's misery. And we had gotten used to that sound because there's a lot of misery and people moaning, and you can't stop all the time. You can't stop, and so we would often just keep moving. It was a, a part of life. But there was this one voice who called out very loudly, Jesus of Nazareth, Messiah, Jesus of, Maz of Nazareth, Son of David, have mercy on us. People told him to be quiet, of course. It was embarrassing. He was being rude. And, and he yelled out again, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus 
Jesus didn't always stop. Why did he stop for this one? I think he stopped because Bartimaeus had called him the son of David. Nobody had ever called him that before. And Jesus recognized that as a way of, of identifying him as the savior of the people of Israel. This blind man had seen the Messiah. And that's what caused Jesus to stop. So Jesus stopped and said, bring him here. And we brought him here. And Jesus says, what would you like? And this blind beggar, who would have been happy with, with a dollar bill, says to himself, I'm going to go for it. I just don't want to be blind anymore. And Jesus said, your faith has healed you. And Bartimaeus was able to see, and we were ready to move on. And Bartimaeus joined our company. What a way for us to end this part of the journey, to be reminded by Bartimaeus. People used to call him blind Bartimaeus. But now, but now, He's been given a new name as well. He's just our brother Bartimaeus. And he has reminded us by joining us that when we cry out in faith, when we, when we recognize Christ in the midst of the crowd, in the midst of the, of the noise and the chaos of life, when we look for that Messiah, for that Christ, and cry out to him, that Christ will come to us. And we will be able to see, see everything. Today, today our brother Bartimaeus joins our company. And we're on our way now to Jerusalem. And I can't tell you what's going to happen next. But it has been an exciting journey so far. And whatever comes next, whatever comes next, there will be a, a spirit unleashed for all of us to be able to carry on Christ's work and to be his body in the world. 